Red Bull's latest win in its intensifying Formula 1 title fight with Mercedes underlines a new dynamic to this battle in which the reigning champion risks flatlining while its would-be usurper forges ahead. It was only four races ago that Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton soundly defeated Red Bull and Max Verstappen in Spain through superior tyre management and race pace. Since then, Red Bull has swept to four consecutive victories and the team and its lead driver have moved ahead in both championships. And in doing so, it's created a shifting title narrative that's increasing the tension between the protagonists. So while the Styrian Grand Prix wasn't the benchmark for on-track excitement this season, it was the scene of more off-track needle between Red Bull and Mercedes and an indicator of where this fascinating fight is heading, giving us plenty to go over in this video and plenty for you to talk about in the comments. The first wins of this Red Bull streak came in Monaco and Azerbaijan on tracks with very singular traits where a car like the Red Bull, which can be loaded with lots of low speed downforce, might have been expected to score heavily. Mercedes was hoping normal service would be resumed in France, a conventional artificial track very much like Barcelona. The tyre management challenge was slightly different, focused on front left graining rather than rear degradation, and Red Bull was on top of that, faster down the straights as well, and won again. Its home race in Austria was the track where the demand of the Spanish Grand Prix would be repeated, but the Styrian Grand Prix instead showed how much things have changed. Red Bull had the fastest car over one lap, but an emphasis on rear tyre deg in Austria and a barn door rear wing Mercedes fitted should have at least given Hamilton better tyre management than Verstappen, even if he was losing a quarter of a second per lap down the straights. Yet Hamilton didn't even have that. This is the fruit of serious labour from Red Bull and Honda, who are hell-bent on winning this title and have a robust development plan in simulation and production. There were five trucks worth of new parts delivered to Red Bull for the Styrian Grand Prix, with new front wings to try and a new floor and diffuser which was raced. The diffuser's shark teeth, believed to be vortex generators helping the airflow at high ride heights stay attached, now stretch across the full width of the component. It's all incredibly close, but the development momentum seems to be with Red Bull. If we compare the last three races with the overall average of the season so far, Red Bull has gained in competitiveness and Mercedes has fallen back. It's a swing of less than a tenth of a second, but it is there and could be crucial in qualifying. And if the Styrian Grand Prix is a reliable indicator that Red Bull has boosted its race day prospects as well, then Red Bull may be establishing a decisive advantage. Within this recent progress from Red Bull has also been a clear trend of it being faster down the straights and comparably quick in the corners. Red Bull had another new rear wing in France following from two introduced at Baku, putting the aero smack bang in the sweet spot for the demands of each track and the tyres. Mercedes by contrast continued with variations of existing wings and didn't seem to have an equivalent sweet spot. That pattern continued at the Red Bull ring and had an impact off track as well. The straight line speed trend has led to speculation that the fresh Honda power units introduced on the Red Bull in France may have been better than the ones they replaced, despite the regulation freeze on performance development. There's a propaganda war ongoing between Red Bull and Mercedes feeding into a narrative of escalating tension between the two rivals. It started with the flexi-wing saga a few races ago, moved on with the tyre pressure implications after Verstappen's tyre failure in Azerbaijan and continued with the news in Austria that new protocols will soon be implemented that are going to slow down pit stops, an area Red Bull is superior. The latest row replaces the flexi-wing angst that was previously pinpointed as the potentially illegal source of Red Bull's straight-line speed prowess. Red Bull had the last word in Austria with a crushing victory, but it was impossible to ignore the frustration it clearly felt amid a curious back and forth that it believes Mercedes has created about a fictional upgrade. After the French Grand Prix, Mercedes boss Toto Wolff said Red Bull had benefited from a huge step forward with their power unit. Hamilton also commented on the straight line speed disparity, first in the build up to the Styrian Grand Prix, then after qualifying in Austria when he said that Red Bull either still had a trick rear wing or that their engine had got better. He echoed the same sentiment after the race as well. Red Bull took these comments to be suggestions of a Honda upgrade, which would be against the rules. Power unit manufacturers were allowed to make one change in specification from the end of 2020 to the end of 2021, and Honda introduced its heavily revised engine for the start of this season. Any subsequent changes must only be for reliability reasons. 
Honda is understood to have introduced small changes for its second set of engines in France, but these were reliability tweaks that were explained to the FIA and would have been communicated to rival manufacturers as well. The fresh Honda engines have been married to an improved oil from supplier ExxonMobil, which may well be worth tangible lap time. Any other gains have come from better understanding its power unit and maximising the energy recovery system. Verstappen's irritation over the recent comments became clear after qualifying, with a tetchy response to an innocuous question about the trend of Honda's engine performing particularly well at higher altitude. It was clear that Verstappen was fed up. Red Bull has had a straight line speed advantage, but he says the source was being misconstrued. It's the skinnier rear wing. Red Bull has had a slightly more stable car than Mercedes since pre-season testing. It appears its mechanical and aerodynamic package is strong enough to allow it to run with less drag without sacrificing too much cornering performance. The odd thing is that Wolf acknowledged this twice during the Styrian Grand Prix weekend, including after the race when he categorically dismissed the notion that Mercedes may suspect something amiss with Honda's second engine. But during the weekend, Horner used this to throw a small dig at Hamilton, saying in Friday's press conference alongside Wolf that Toto had characterised the situation well and should explain that to his driver. The bottom line is Red Bull feels it's faced unfair accusations lately, while Mercedes has been focused on finding potential irregularities in its rival's conduct. So the chatter around another of its advantages left Red Bull unsurprisingly riled up. Hamilton said that Mercedes really needs an upgrade of some sort in the aftermath of his team's Styrian Grand Prix defeat, but team boss Wolf said shortly after that that no further development for its W12 Challenger is on the cards. Mercedes will instead focus on optimising the package as its development work is now completely on the all-new rules coming into force next season. Conversely, Red Bull's still updating its RB16B and has further development plans. So how much will Red Bull's 2021 focus cost it on next year's car? Well, after seven years straight of defeat by Mercedes, it would be understandable if there was an element of let's cross that bridge when we come to it about this year's campaign. But Horner expects the same will really be the case for Mercedes as well, suggesting Wolf was telling Porkies. If Wolf is correct, then Mercedes is just hanging on and hoping different track layouts may come to their rescue enough times to still make a fight of it. That didn't happen in Austria. There wasn't a single complicating factor in Verstappen's victory drive, save for a concern about an occasional randomly timed long brake pedal. Once Verstappen had built an undercut defending cushion over Hamilton, he just managed everything. There was no need to take risk, there were no ambiguous strategy calls to make. That's what a raw performance advantage buys you. That's how a faster car's race plays out in the modern era. This will surely only be adding to the stress at Mercedes. For years, people have speculated when Mercedes' focus would slip or when it would simply be outgunned. It's tempting to wonder if that might be happening now, thanks to the combination of success fatigue, the awkward adjustment to this year's cost cap in the time of the pandemic and with a dual development programme on the table as well, and the floor rules tweaks for this season, which might or might not have been deliberately targeted at slowing Mercedes down. The pressure on Mercedes to respond is enormous, but whether it can do so with no major developments coming and a focus on 2022 is a very difficult question to answer. So we're going to ask you, do you think Mercedes and Hamilton will fight back against Red Bull and Verstappen, or does it look like F1 will finally have a new world champion team and driver this year? Let us know in the comments, give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and hit the red button if you're not already subscribed to join us again in the future.